Hello and welcome to TA. We're live in store today and my name is Marsha Mathers and I'm with Whirlpool and today we're going to take a look at the KitchenAid combination wall oven unit and I thought a fun way to uh, showcase this product today would be to um, take a look at maybe recreating some of those Christmas or holiday uh, foods that we have in make them into really delicious leftovers. So today we're going to be making uh, turkey, cranberry, and brie grilled sandwiches in the combination oven, so not on the cooktop. So a lot of times people buy a combination oven and they know that the top part is a microwave and they know it's an oven, but they get a little bit nervous to use it as an oven and they strictly use it as a microwave. So today I just want to show you how easy it is to use as an oven and how great it performs and give you a couple of tips and tricks and then answer some other general questions about the oven in general. So I hope you really enjoy the topic today and hopefully uh, what we're making makes you hungry and what makes you want to try this. Uh, if you're liking the content, please give us a like and uh, drop your email in the chat. Also, if you have any questions or you'd like to know more about the KitchenAid product, just pop those questions in the chat as well and we'll get to them during the course of the training. All right. Leave a rating, like us, subscribe <laughs> if you like a YouTuber. Okay, so first things first, um, we're gonna today we're going to talk about using the crisper pan. So this is a product that comes with the oven when you buy it. You, excuse my, my um, butter marks on here. I've been practicing this morning. But this is a crisper pan and when you use it in the top oven it actually becomes like a frying pan. So if you're doing anything that you want to have a crispy crust on it or to get that nice crisp flavors, this is absolutely the tool to be using. It works great for breaded chicken breasts or fish fillets. It works great for chicken wings. So when you're oven roasting chicken wings you're still going to get a nice crisp on the, on the skin. Um, but today we're going to use it for grilled cheese so oven grilled cheese so the first thing you need to do is just pop it in and start warming this up so we'll do that now and while that's warming up we'll talk about some other features of the oven so all we want to do is just pop that in there and for this one because we're using the microwave function and because I'm using the crisper pan I'm going to use the crisp feature and it just gives me a reminder there to use the crisp pan and then it's going to ask me what's my cook time well I'm just warming this up so for now I'll just put in uh, five minutes and there's no rhyme or reason to that it's just long enough to get the pan nice and hot and then I start it so that's going to preheat the pan and preheat the oven for when I'm ready to start doing the grilled cheese so in the meantime while that's heating why don't we talk a little bit about the main oven so the KitchenAid oven itself, again, this is 30 inches wide, but we do have a 27 inch wide option if you're looking to save a little bit of space. The nice thing about these ovens is that they can be installed flush. So if you're really looking for that integrated flush install look, these ovens can do that for you. So don't forget about that as well. When you look in the oven, you'll notice that the oven itself is going to come with three racks. Two of them are what we call standard racking systems, so they're what we're typically used to. But then you're going to get one full extension roller rack. And this is a really heavy duty roller rack. It's on ball bearings and it's going to be able to take any, uh, any size turkey or roast or anything heavy that you might put in there and allow you to slide that easily in and out. You can adjust these any way you want. There's six adjuster slides and you can use those any way you want. When you look in the oven itself, we have three different elements to work with. So you have a bake element that's 2,800 watts. You have a broil element that's 4,000 watts. And then you have the convection element at the back with the iconic KitchenAid bowtie convection element and that is 3,200 watts. So this oven provides you with a total of 10,000 watts of cooking power. And that is quite a lot. That is probably, it's, it's probably the most in its class for cooking. And, you know, a lot of times we don't ask about wattage or power in an oven, but this is really what allows you to create um, even cooking throughout your oven. It allows you to do cookies on all three racks without having to move your cookie trays. 
gives you that nice browning. Um, so it's really what you're looking for that, that gives you that true even heat convection cooking in your oven. So power is awesome. We have the staggered halogen lightings here. Uh, lighting in your oven is one of those things that can be overlooked a little bit, but having the lighting staggered, it helps you to see what's in your oven, especially when the oven is closed. You'll be able to um, take a look without having to open the door because we know every time we open the door, we lose about 25 to 50 degrees of heat. So being able to see well without opening the door is ideal. Okay, are we getting any questions in the chat? Hey, well, don't forget, if you're liking the content, please give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. And feel free to drop your email into the chat in case you would like to uh, receive any discounts for these products or other KitchenAid products. Um, so we're heating up the crisper pan now. And it probably should be close to, close to done heating up. So I'm just going to bring you back around and show you what we're going to do today. So... It is the season of turkey and cranberries, and if you're like my household, you have lots of leftovers because you've made way too much. So also, if you're like my household, the people in your house don't love eating leftovers just like they were, so they need to be recreated and made original again. So one way to do that is through delicious grilled cheese sandwiches. So here I am using cinnamon raisin bread. And I'm also using some nice homemade bread that I made yesterday. So, but use whatever bread you like or whatever you have. Do you like pumpernickel, rye, um, you know, white bread, whatever you got. It's fine. Because um, really it's the butter that's going to make this taste delicious and the cheese, right? So put your butter on there. I particularly like the raisin bread because I think it gives it a really neat flavor to have the salty and the sweet and the sour with the... Um, cranberry sauce that we're going to put on. So we'll start with that. Just butter up your bread and get that ready. And then you go over here and you get your crisper pan. You can just do there. Make sure to use this. <laughs> That's your little lifter thing. And that just helps you bring that out. And this is going to just sizzle like a frying pan. Ooh. Sounds great. I wish we had smellow vision like the Jetsons. All right, so I'm going to pop that back in the oven for a minute before we put everything else on. And I'll just hit start again because I've still got a little bit of time left on there. So I'll just let that go through. There we go. And then in the meantime, um, while that's cooking, I just want to show you that I do have the cranberry sauce on our induction cooktop here. So I made cranberry sauce yesterday, and I just wanted to show you, because a lot of people, when they talk about induction, they talk about how fast it boils and how quick it is and, and all that stuff, which is totally true. You should, you know, that's awesome. It boils pasta water in so little time. But what people often forget is how great it is in your low temperatures. So being able to, you know, simmer something on a really low temperature or do things like sugars or chocolates or cream sauces and put it on a really low temperature and not have to worry that it's going to burn. That's a really great feature of induction. So just so you know, I came in this morning at about 11 it's 12.30 now, and I put this on, I got it, I set it to about a four or five, I got it warm, and then since then I put it down to the, this simmer section here, and it's just been simmering away on this element all morning, and I wasn't worried about it burning, I wasn't worried about it charring or anything like that, and um, it's quite perfectly fine on here. So low temperatures, induction element, a really great option for you, along with being easy to clean and very safe, and a whole very efficient it's a whole host of reasons to think about induction cooktops for your next cooktop purchase okay so we've got the bread all nice and crisping up here and now it's time to add the accoutrement so uh, the main ingredient the star of the show is of course the cheese so here I'm using a camembert cheese, but 
I just like any sort of like strong flavored melty cheese. You can use anything. You can use old cheese, whatever you like. But I just find that for something like this, this adds a little bit of decadence to it to add, to use like a camembert or a brie or something like that. So, but whatever you like. If you don't like this, use something else. You can even use blue cheese if you like blue cheese. I don't bother to cut the rinds off. Um, I think especially when it melts, it adds a little bit of flavor to the, the cooking as well. So I just put that on one side. And you'll just have to use your powers of imagination because I did not roast a turkey for this demonstration. So I am using um, deli turkey. But you know, imagine you're using your turkey leftovers or chicken leftovers or even ham. Ham would be delicious in this as well. So I'm just going to put this on as if I'd made a turkey and I have leftovers. I know you guys can all like come with me on my imagination here. So, and you just, you know, do this up as much as you want. Oh, okay, so somebody's asking, do I need to use any special bakeware or cookware for the induction cooktop? For induction cooktop, um, a lot of people shy away from it because they're worried that they need special cookware. So the answer is yes and no. So yes, you need induction-ready cookware, and that means that it's able to create an electromagnetic connection with the cooktop. But what most people don't know is that they probably have induction-ready cookware. Um, if you take your pot and you stick a magnet to the bottom, if it sticks, then your pots are ready to go. And so a lot of people already have these, these pots, they just didn't know it. Um, so, so yeah, also, if you buy a KitchenAid product, whether that be a freestanding range or a cooktop, you will get a free set of pots and pans from us. So that's a, in an, a specialty offer that we are running regularly. It's not a limited time. So anytime you buy a KitchenAid induction product, you'll get a really nice set of pots and pans. So you don't even have to worry about that as being, um, you know, a deal breaker to trying to enter into the induction realm. Okay, so now that we have the cheese and the turkey on, we're going to put it back into the oven. And then we'll just start it up again. So I've already ran out of my time, so I'm going to say crisp again, because I'm going to use the crisper pan again. And then it's going to ask me um, how much time I want to put on here. So I think probably about three minutes. So there's no science, there's not a recipe, I'm just making this up. So I'll just put three minutes in, but then I'll just kind of keep an eye on it and make sure that it's not um, getting too overdone. But that's kind of it. I also cut up some red onions. Some people like making red onions or having red onions. I feel neutral about the red onions. but um, So that's putting that in there. Now, while this is cooking, I'll talk a little bit about the oven itself. So, oh. So I think I just opened it a little bit. So the oven itself is what we refer to as a speed oven. And it is a speed oven because it has the capability of using both microwaves and other sources of heat. So yes, it is a microwave. It heats your tea, it pops your popcorn, it reheats your coffee, it does all of those great things a microwave does. But it has a broil element in here and a convection element as well. So your broil element, um, I can get the water just for you. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but your convection, I think, is uh, 1,200. So it's a very good amount of heat for such a small compartment. So I have um, roasted a whole chicken in there. I have baked a cake. I have baked a pie. I am doing grilled cheese. I have done lots of things in the speed oven. Um, and especially I find, you know, if you're uh, just doing a small dish, like so if you're just cooking up a couple of chicken breasts or maybe a couple of fish fillets, um, it's really great to just do it in the smaller oven because it's less to heat up. Now, I do have a question that came in. Does it come in different colors? Yes, it does. So we're showing this one today in the black stainless steel, but of course it does come in regular stainless steel as well. And we do have KitchenAid in white as well. So great question. Thank you for asking. All right, let me just see how we're doing here. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Got some melty cheese. Pull that out. Hello. All right, so you can see I've got melted cheese. All looking good there. I'm going to add a little bit of cranberry sauce to each one. 
So I made this, you know, people buy it from the can, which is fine. You can do whatever you want. But this literally took me five minutes to make. You buy your cranberries, you throw in some brown sugar, some water. I threw in a little bit of orange juice, orange zest. Bingo, bango, you've got cranberries that don't squirch out of a can. Okay. Ooh, nice and crispy. Put those on there. And voila, you now have oven made in your speed oven grilled cheese turkey cranberry and brie grilled cheese so hopefully you're uh, enjoying learning a little bit more about the kitchen wall oven and maybe got some ideas on how to recreate your holiday leftovers if you have any questions pop them into the chat below please hit that like button. And if you have any questions, again, please add them into the chat. And the question, I have a question from Jenna. Can you use any bakeware in the microwave? Um, yes, again, if you're using just the full microwave function, the only thing you have to be careful with is having any sort of aluminum, right? So these pans are specially designed to be microwave safe, So, but you wouldn't want to use microwaves with, say, a fork in there or with aluminum foil or something like that. But general bakeware, whether it be, um, you know, ceramic or, uh, you know, uh, microwave safe plastics, like those are all fine. So that works out just great. Okay. So, kitchen microwave combo unit comes in 20 inch, uh, 27 inches or 30 inches, installs flush, really great power, 10,000 watts in the main oven, convection and broil along with microwave oven in the top speed oven here, um, self-clean in the bottom, lots of great reasons to consider KitchenAid for your next double oven or combination unit wall oven. Any other questions? Okay. Did we have any in the chat? Okay. Let me run through it again. Oops. All right. So for those of you who are just joining us, if, I, if you've missed the introduction, my name is Marsha and I'm with Whirlpool. And today we're in store at TA and we're wanting to show you the KitchenAid combination wall oven unit. So this unit specifically is 30 inches wide and it's in the black stainless steel, but it also does come in regular stainless steel and it comes in a 27 inch option as well if you're looking to save some space in your kitchen. Um, the oven itself is very full, is very well powered. So when you look in here, you're going to see that you have a hidden bake element, so you can't see it, but you just have to trust me that it's there, and it's 2,800 watts. My broil element on the top here is 4,000 watts, and the KitchenAid Classic Bowtie Convection element back there is 3,200 watts. So that gives us a total of 10,000 watts of power. And as a consumer, we don't often talk about power or ask about it, but it is one of the things that helps an oven perform really well. And it's what helps us to get really even heat throughout the whole cavity of the oven so that when we're baking cookies, we don't have to be shuffling around cookie pans or when we're doing a roast, we know that the whole roast is gonna get evenly browned. So it is something that's important, but maybe not something we talk as much about. But rest assured that KitchenAid with 10,000 watts of power in here is a very well powered machine, probably one of the best in its class. Um, when you buy this oven, you're going to get three racks, and two of them will be standard racks, just like what you're used to with the racking system. But you're also going to get one, what we call a full extension roller rack. And this is on heavy-duty ball bearings, and it's designed to take, um, I think it will weigh, hold up to more than 50 pounds, which, you know, if you've got a turkey that's 50 pounds, then invite me over for dinner because i got to see that thing. So, But it is designed to, um, you know, hold not only heavy items, but also the cookware that it's in as well. So don't be afraid to put whatever you've got on this rack. And it helps by being able to um, move it in and out very easily. Um, the, the oven itself is 5.5 cubic feet. So a lot of people want, want to know this, but um, it's gonna, it, it is large enough to 
uh, cook most things that you want to cook. Unless you have those big commercial cooking racks or uh, baking sheets, it's going to be um, sufficient for everything that you have otherwise. And again, with the lighting in here, that's another thing to look at. You have really nice, nice chef lighting, so it's staggered, which when you look in it, it helps to illuminate the whole cavity so you don't have um, dark spots or blind spots. And this is most important when you close the door because we want to be able to see in the oven well without having to open the door because we lose about you know, 25 to 50 degrees of heat every time we open the door. So if we can check on how things are going well without having to open the door, then that's really great. So today we're gonna to spend a little bit more time focusing on the upper oven, which we refer to as a speed oven, because it is designed to use not only microwave, uh, microwaves, but also a broil element and a convection element. So a lot of time people buy these and they think, oh, this is great as a speed oven, and then they never use it as an oven. They just use it like a microwave. They heat their tea, pop their popcorn, reheat their coffee, whatever. But um, I just want to show you that this really can be used as an oven, and um, it does a really good job, and it has a couple of cool features that allow you to do um, some nice things. And today, we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at how we can recreate leftovers. So um, it's the holiday season. A lot of people have cranberry sauce left over. They have some turkey or ham left over. And if it's anything like my household, uh, my people don't love to eat leftovers like leftovers. They want them recreated somehow and reimagined. So um, in my house, I like to do stuff like grilled cheese. So today we're going to do a leftover turkey leftover cranberry sauce, grilled cheese in the oven, okay? So to do that, we're gonna put the crisper pan. So this is a utensil, and just mind the butter because I've been making some stuff here. But this is a, a item that comes with the product. So this is what we refer to as our crisper pan. And essentially what it does is it acts like a frying pan in the oven. So anything that you would want to have a crispy uh, exterior on this is the really a great tool to use. So if you're doing um, breaded fish or breaded chicken, use the crisper pan. If you're reheating pizza so that you don't get that flat, like that um, wilty crust, you can use the crisper pan. And in this case, or chicken wings is another really good one. And in this case, we're going to use it to make oven grilled cheese. So the first thing that you do is just get the pan hot, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. There's um, no specific time to put it in. Just get it hot. So I'm going to use my microwave um, section here. So you can see the oven when it has two parts. It's really easily identified. You're either operating the microwave or you're operating the lower oven. If this were a double oven, you'd be operating the upper oven or the lower oven. So it's, it's really easy to use from a, a user standpoint. So in this case, I'm going to use the crisp function because we're using that crisper pan. It's gonna remind you to use the crisp pan and then it's asking for the cook time. I'm just gonna pop five minutes in here because um, it doesn't really matter how long I use. I just want to um, get the uh, product, the, the pan hot. So, it's telling me it wants the door open in there. There we go. There we go. So now that's preheating. So while that's preheating, I just thought I'd take a minute to just show you the um, cranberry sauce here. So I make my own cranberry sauce because I can't handle the way cranberry sauce comes out of a can. You know, you open up and it goes, that just can't handle it. So it takes like literally five minutes to make. You buy a pack of cranberries, you throw some water sugar in there, and I did a, an orange zest a little bit of orange juice, and that's it. You boil it. All you have to do. So um, what I like about induction is that, you know, a lot of people, when they're, when they're suggesting induction or they talk about the benefits of induction, they're talking about specifically how fast it is. You know, it's so quick to boil water. It's so quick to heat your pasta water. 
and that's true and it's wonderful but what a lot of people forget to talk about is how great induction is on your low heat temperatures so for anybody who does work with sugars, chocolates, cream sauces, gravies, anything like that where you want to maintain a really nice low temperature, induction is the very best. It's better than gas because you can get a really low temperature consistently. So I came in at at about 11 o'clock this morning and I turned this on to about a 4 or 5 to get it warm and then I turned it to um, simmer and I've had this on here now for, well, since about 11.30, and it's, I don't have any sticking, it's not charring, it's not seizing, um, it just stays really at a really low temperature so you don't have to worry about it. Um, just a, a side note that, you know, for induction cooktops, if you're interested in wall ovens, you might be interested also then in a cooktop, and I really do highly recommend induction. Um, not only is it great for boiling, it's great for keeping it at a low heat, it's also great for cleanup, it's very safe, and it's very efficient. So a couple of great things to think about there. And while you guys are watching, if you're liking the content and you think it's great, please give us a thumbs up. And if you're interested in um, any savings from the KitchenAid product, uh, please put your email in the comments below and um, yeah, and we'll hook you up. Uh, um, otherwise, uh, please make any comments that you have in the comments below as well. Oh, I have a question. Does the convection and microwave run at the same time or only separately? No, they will both run at the same time. So. Yes, if you, this is a perfect scenario for uh, Christmas holiday cooking. So if you're trying to, you know, bake a cake and roast a turkey and do, you know, scalloped potatoes or whatever the case is, absolutely both can run at the same time and definitely get some multitasking in there. Great question, Terry. Thank you. Okay. So I think our pan will be hot enough now. So just before we take it out, I'm just going to, you can see here I've been making other stuff. So I'm just going to show you what I'm doing by... Um, doing some buttered bread here. I mean, butter really is the secret to grilled cheese, isn't it? Butter and cheese. So I uh, just made up some bread last night, but I also really like using raisin bread. I think raisin bread gives it a really unique flavor. And um, it just works for me. I like the sour, I like the sweet and the salty, and then the sour with the cranberries. I think it really creates an, a unique um, flavor combination, but again, use whatever bread you have. Like, if you've got pumpernickel or sourdough or rye or Wonder Bread, it's all going to be good. So don't worry about that. Okay, so we've got the butter on the bread. I'm going to take this out. And we're just going to pop this on, and you're going to hear the sizzle. Oh, that's a good sound. That is a good sound, my friends. Okay, so we're going to put these back in the oven just for a second, and I'm going to start it, and it's just going to get that nice crispness on the grilled cheese. And then while I'm doing that, I just thought it would be interesting to show you a couple of the features that you have, because I do get a question now and again that... Um, if a wall oven has convection cooking, and convection means that there's an element in the back and there's also a fan that helps to move air over the food, right? So that's what convection is. Um, but some people want to know if you can use the oven without convection. And sometimes people want to know this because they're doing things like pumpkin pie or cheesecake or things where you don't want air moving because you might get cracks in the top or stuff like that. So yes, so when you look at the oven here, you'll see that you have bake, broil, and proof. Those features are convection-free. Bake, broil, and proof. Now, the convection element might come on um, to preheat or to get the oven to temperature, but the main cooking algorithm will be um, not using the convection. And then when you get to the convection section here, it's going to be convect, bake, convect, broil, convect, roast, so that you have all of those options. And then a lot of times the, the next question I get asked is for somebody going to convection for the first time, um, how will I know what to set it to? Because the it you know runs a little warmer, it runs a little less time. So what do I? How do I manage that? Well, all of these are conversions. So if I choose convect bake, 
it's going to ask me, would you like to convert the recipe, yes or no? So if I say yes, if I'm using a traditional recipe, it's going to then ask me, enter your standard temperature. So let's say that the recipe called for 350. Okay, great. So I'll put in 350. And then it's going to say, enter the standard time. So if the standard time of that recipe said 30 minutes, I'll put that. And then I can just hit start. And it's going to do any conversions that need to happen for me. I don't need to worry about converting my recipes or changing that. It just does it all for me. And I will tell you guys that as you get used to using the oven, you'll get a feel for how it runs and what the temperature is. You know, like I used my conversion feature for the first little bit, and then you just get a feel for how long things take and how hot it is, just like if you were getting a new oven. Okay, okay so this is nice and hot now. We're going to add our cheese. Um, I like using like a nice creamy cheese. This is a camembert. You can use brie. You can use um, whatever you like. You can use cream cheese. You can use old cheese. I just find like a cheese like this gives you a lot of flavor and it's got a lot of melty, melty goodness to it. Um, but again, there is no rules with grilled cheese. You can do whatever you want. And I'm going to be really decadent and put three on here. Whoever gets this one is lucking out. Okay. And then um, use your powers of imagination. I did not roast a turkey for purposes of the demonstration. So I'm just using deli turkey, but you, just use your imagination, folks, and pretend that I roasted a turkey for you and I'm using turkey leftovers here. Okay. So just going to put my turkey on here. And I, I did cut up some red onions. Some people really like red onions on this type of thing. It gives it another layer of flavor. I'm going to leave it off just in case. I'm going to share these around later just in case somebody doesn't like them. Um, you can always add them afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to put these back in the oven to get the cheese all melty. So I ran out of time, so I'm just going to engage this again. I'm going to do crisp. Use the crisp pan. Yes. And I'm going to do about two minutes, I think. And I'll just keep an eye on it and see when things start to get melty. And then start. So while that's cooking, again, I'd just like to remind you that if you're enjoying the content, please give us a thumbs up. And if you're interested in KitchenAid products and you might like to receive a discount, please put your uh, email address in the chat below and we'll reach out to you. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we, you know, this is kind of new content for us and we're hoping that this is something you're enjoying. And if you like seeing, using the product live with, with a cooking demo, we'd really like to hear about that from you. So, uh, please let us know if this works or if you'd just like to do a product walkthrough or however you'd like to see this. All right. Um, so again, just a reminder, if you're looking at the, the combination wall oven, wall ovens come in single ovens double ovens, so two full-size ovens, or this combination unit where it's a lower oven and this is a speed oven. Speed oven using both microwaves and um, regular elements like a bake element and a convection element. Uh, they come in 27 inches wide and 30 inches wide and they come in black stainless steel and stainless steel. So there's lots of options that fit your needs. Um, another question I get asked a lot is if they get a single oven, will it install under a cooktop and yes it will so they are designed to install under a cooktop if that's the space that you have um, so there's lots of flexibility and all of these will install flush so if you're looking for that fully integrated really uh, flush look the KitchenAid wall ovens will install flush okay so let's just take a peek here at how these uh, are doing and if we oh we need a little bit more time I think there we go. A little bit more time. Any questions in the messengers? Okay. Well, please let us know how you how you like this content, or if there's a type of content that you'd like to see. Would you like to see something on dishwashers, or did you like the cooking content? Um, maybe you need to run into store and help me eat some of these uh, uh, delicious grilled cheeses. So if that's the case, I hope I see you see you soon. All right, we're definitely at melt factor now. So I can take these out. 
We've got some melty cheese happening. You can see here. Ah, oh, yum. And I'm just going to give it a nice little chop here so you can... Oh, I forgot to put the cranberry sauce on. Well, let's do that now. Put some cranberry sauce on because this is, I think, part of what really makes this delicious. Mm. Give that a nice little cut. Perfect. I have all the staff here at TA lining up for some grilled cheeses. So I really thank you guys for joining us today. I really hope you enjoyed this kind of content. And please let us know if you did or if there's something else that you'd like to see. Um, really happy to uh, do, the, do whatever you like for that. And uh, if there's something else that you'd like to learn more about, happy to do that as well. So thank you for joining us today. And that was it. That was Marsha from Whirlpool.